Hey everyone, welcome to Caswell's Kappa, where I show you how to work on your Kappa step by step. In today's video, we're going to learn how to replace the ECT or the engine coolant temperature sensor. I'll provide you with everything you need, ranging from tools, service manual pages, part numbers, and torque specs. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so when it comes to locating the uh, coolant sensor, the coolant temperature sensor, it's going to be right here. It's in the same area as a thermostat. So you'll come down here and you'll see this metal wire kind of circling back and there's a large little foil piece right here. The coolant sensor for me is behind that guy. So let's go in here, move him out of the way so that we can see the sensor. And come on. There we go. Move that out of the way. And there is our coolant sensor right there. Now, when it comes to removing the coolant sensor, we don't have to do a complete drain. Uh, it does only call for a partial drain, whether that's the engine block or the radiator. It doesn't specify, but more than likely, it's probably been a while since your last coolant change. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do a whole, a complete drain block, and then we'll show you how to refill that and replace the thermostat. All right, so first things first, before we drain the coolant, we need to remove the cap according to the service manual, and we'll set that to the side. All right, so we got the vehicle jacked up with my jack, got a jack stand in place, and I got my wheel chock set up. So coming to the front of the vehicle on the passenger side, it's gonna be right underneath the radiator here. We're looking for the drain cock. Squeeze underneath here, and right here, is where the coolant's gonna flow out. The drain pet cock is gonna be up here. You see this little white screw? Let's see where we at, right here. It's a little white screw right there. So you'll act like it's a bolt and just loosen it, and the more you loosen it, the more coolant's gonna flow out of this drain cock. So make sure you get a pan. Uh, I don't remember how much flows out, but make sure you get a good size one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, now that I got my pan, I'm gonna reach under here, and I'll loosen the pet cock. It's pretty stiff, there we go. Loosen it, come on. There we go. Loosen it, and I'm gonna let that radiator drain out all the way. All right, now, once most of the coolant's out, and I say most because you're not going to be able to get all of it out, you can have a steady drip for a while, and it would be just redundant to wait that long to get everything out, you know. So, but now that a majority of it's out, close your pet cock, and we can move on to the water pump drain plug. All right, so next we need to drain the water pump. Now, of course, the water pump's on the right side of the engine. It's located right here. The drain plug is located more towards the back around this area behind that silver hose. Now, the drain plug is pointed down. That is not the plug right there. It's right near the plug, but it's not it. So there's this bolt right here. It's right behind that bolt there. So this drain plug it's not lateral or horizontal, it's facing up and down. And I'll show you by going underneath the vehicle here. Either way you try to do this, it's gonna suck. There's not a lot of room whenever you go to drain it. It's not like the pet cock here where you can, you know, place your pan underneath it and it's all nice and neat. No, it's not like that at all. So let's see here. So here we're underneath the water pump. That's the plug right there this one right here and it's got a green mark that's awesome uh now as you can see it's just it's gonna go everywhere it's gonna be a mess so just heads up uh, that is a 13 millimeter bolt uh you're gonna want a big pan for this one so we're gonna go ahead and get to draining this bad boy all right so i ended up taking my wheel off because i did notice there is a slight opening on the underside next to the brake line so if you go under here squeeze up underneath here we can see water pumps right there and there's the drain 
So instead of going through the top or the bottom, we can go through the wheel well and we have a much larger opening. So there's a little tip for you. All right, so finally got that bolt loosened. This one was a pain in the butt. I hope y'all don't have to do this. Uh, it's supposed to be 15 foot-pounds of torque, but it's more like hundreds of foot-pounds of torque. I don't know if it was seized. There's some kind of gunk on it from what I noticed, so it could have just been seized. So let's loosen this and see where the flow goes real quick. Uh, I did not want to loosen that all the way. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Thanks for giving us a pack cock on the radiator, but not on the water pump, guys. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I knew that was going to be a mess. Okay, well, that's, uh, yeah, that sucks. So that's how you're going to do that. Once it's all drained, you can reinstall the plug. All right, now that coolant's drained, we can remove the coolant sensor here. All right, we can remove that coolant sensor here. Now to remove the coolant sensor, as you can see, there's a tab up top. Just take a finger, press up on it, and slide it off. Like that. So now that it's off, we can work to removing this. Uh, this is a three quarter. Uh, you would use a wrench on this one. You're not really going to be able to get a socket on there. But you can take a wrench and you can just take a wrench and slide it on through the back like so. So we're going to go ahead and get that removed here. Alright, and just real quick, if y'all don't want to use a wrench and you have one big socket, this socket will fit the sensor so that you don't have to struggle with a wrench because that will take forever. So that's a little tip there. Alright, so here's the old one and here's the new one. As you can see, the old one is discolored and very worn. And then here is the new one. So it was about time that we had this one changed. Probably should have changed it sooner. But regardless, uh, this one's out. Time to install the new one. It is pre-threaded, so you don't have to worry about that. When you install the new sensor, it is 15 foot-pounds of torque. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we got our wiring harness plugged back in. We got the sensor in place, uh, torqued to 15 foot-pounds, and then we slid the little cover piece over the sensor. And now that that's done, you've pretty much completed installing your ECT sensor. All right, so when it comes to filling up your coolant, it's going to take a lot of coolant since we did a complete drain. Uh, depending on which model you have and variation trim, it'll be anywhere between eight to nine and a half uh, liters of coolant. So each coolant container, uh, these gallons, they're about 3.87 liters. So it's going to take about three uh two to three to completely fill the system now i'll run you on all the steps on how to slowly fill the system and we're go uh, by following the service manual we're going to prevent an air pocket from happening but because an air pocket in the system is very common for these vehicles and it will cause your engine to overheat and you'll also lose heat in the winter uh, so we're going to uh, walk through the steps on how to do this right here all right, now if you have a Redline or GXP, we need to make sure to grab a pair of locking pliers and we need to pinch the coolant hose that runs to the turbo. Now this is done to prevent coolant and air from reaching the turbo while we raise the reservoir up 14 inches. And if you do use some locking pliers, remember these have serrated teeth. So you want to cover the hose with a rag to prevent damage to the hose while pinching those. And now that those are pinched, we can move on to filling. All right, so before we start filling, we need to disconnect several things around the surge tank so that we can raise it 14 inches. For one, there is a coolant sensor down here that we need to disconnect. As you can see, there's a clip on this side. Just take the clip and push out and then push down and it's disconnected. 
Next is the surge tank retainer or clip. To remove this, just get you a key, pop it up a little bit on the sides, then just take the top out and as you can see it's raised right here. You can use another flat head or your key once again or just get your finger in there and pry it up and pull it out and set that to the side. Next, if you have a red line or a GXP, we need to remove the hose from the clip. Just pull out and lift up, and you can set that to the side or leave it there. Next up, we'll remove the surge tank retainer nut, which can be found back here. To take it off, set it to the side. And lastly, we'll need to disconnect the coolant hose right here from the wheelhouse. As you can see, it's connected right here. You'll just have to take that and pry it out. All right, so now that everything's disconnected, we can take our surge tank and raise it up. It says to 14 inches above the bracket. So we'll take it, we'll raise it up, and obviously this isn't 14 inches, but you can take the radiator hose underneath the surge tank. You can give it a couple nice tugs, and as you can see, it gives us a lot more slack. A couple more, and that's about 14 inches right there. So whenever you fill the surge tank, the service manual does say to fill it about 15 millimeters below the neck. So it's about right here, and you'll have to do it multiple times. It says it will slowly fill the system, and it will take approximately about 10 minutes, maybe even more, depending on how fast it fills the system. So we're going to go ahead and fill it up to here, and we're going to raise it up. All right, so once your coolant has settled, make sure it's about... A little bit above the cold fill line. Next, install the retainer, the cap, the nut, and the coolant sensor underneath. Now the service manual does mention to make sure that it has a minimum of 5.5 liters of coolant. That's about a bottle and a half. They're 3.87 liters, so about a bottle and a half. 5.5 uh, liters to ensure the proper thermal cycle for priming the water pump. Uh, for the LE5 engine, what we're going to do is once everything is on, we are going to start the engine, let it idle for a moment, then we'll rev it at about 2,000 to 2,500 RPM for three minutes. After the three minutes has passed, we'll stop revving the engine, let it idle for 30 seconds, check the cold fill line. If it's fallen below within the first 10 minutes, we're going to refill the coolant system and try it again until it has settled and that will be it for the LE5. Alright now for the LNF engine once everything is on we're going to keep our pliers pinching that hose. We don't want anything getting through quite yet. We will take care of that later. Make sure it's slightly above the coal field mark. We're going to start our engine and we will run it or rev it at about 2000 to 2500 RPM for five minutes not three. Once the five minutes has finished, we will let the vehicle idle. Then we will remove the pliers. We will let the vehicle sit for five minutes and idle through five minutes. Once that five minutes has passed, we may shut the engine off. Once the pressure has cooled down and depressurized, add more coolant. Once you have added more coolant, restart the engine and we will restart the process once again at 2000 to 2500 RPM, but this time we will do it for 10 minutes, not five. Once the 10 minutes has passed, we may let the engine idle for a moment, shut the engine down, check the cool, uh, the coolant mark, and then if necessary, uh, I would possibly do it for another five minutes. It's not necessary according to the service manual, but I would do it as a precaution. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so before you do start your engine and begin revving, I do want to remind you, uh, if it is on a hot day like today, right now it's about 93 degrees, make sure all your air conditioning is off. You don't want this on because this will cause the fan to turn on or it will cause your system to start working harder. And everyone knows when you're running your AC, your engine tends to heat up more. So make sure all that is off and since the vehicle will be staying still especially the nf or the lnf for about 10 minutes you may want to bring a fan just the, so that it blows through the radiator a little bit if your vehicle starts to overheat if your vehicle starts to overheat immediately shut down your engine grab you a fan and begin to cool down just a tad bit you don't want your engine overheating but other than that 
we can start her up. All right, so the five minutes has passed. For the LNF engine, make sure you disconnect the pliers and you're gonna let it sit for five minutes. After the five minutes has ended, you will shut off your engine, refill the level as needed, and then restart your engine for another 10 minutes. Now for the 2.4 engine, this is where you're gonna let your engine idle for 30 seconds, shut her down, let her cool off, and then refill as necessary. And if you'd like, you can restart the process just in case to make sure there's no air in the system. But once that has finished, you are pretty much done with your filling. But for the LNF engine, we still have to wait a little bit. All right, so for the LNF engine, we have shut down our engine and we are now going to let the system depressurize and cool down. Once it's cooled down, we'll check the cold fill mark, which it has gone down just a tiny bit, which it will also go down more once it cools down. Once it's cooled off, add coolant as necessary. Then we will restart the process by starting our engine and revving our engines for 10 minutes at 2000 to 2500 RPM. All right, so for the LNF engine, our engine has cooled down. And as you can see, the radiator level has gone down quite a bit, about a good whole inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. So we're going to refill our coolant to the cold fill line, maybe just a little bit more since we will be running our engine for another 10 minutes. So once you fill your coolant, hop in your car, start her up, and rev it between 2,000 and 2,500 RPM for 10 minutes. And then we'll get back with you. All right, now that your engine has been revving for 10 minutes and you let it idle and shut down the engine, come check your coolant level, see if it's gone down or if it's gone up, see what's going on. Let it cool down a little bit, enough so that you can open the radiator without it exploding on you. And add coolant or take away coolant if necessary. If everything turns out all right, your engine didn't overheat, everything looks nominal, everything is at the cold fill line, then you have completed draining and filling your coolant all right now some of you may be wondering hey you know you didn't really add that much coolant you only added about maybe a bottle and a half maybe a little more and that is only 3.87 liters per bottle so that's only about five liters where's the other three is your coolant system low well you have to look back to how much you drained as well I drained about maybe a bottle and a half, give or take, of coolant. And then I re when I refilled the coolant, I refilled it with about a bottle and a half. So whatever I took away, I actually put back in. And believe it or not, with how many recesses are within the engine, like I disconnected a hose down there, coolant. When I disconnected the thermostat earlier, coolant. There are so many little pits in there and reservoirs you have no idea you could have a whole two three liters of coolant just sitting somewhere in your engine in the recesses of it and you have no idea so the moral is here whatever you take out you're probably going to end up putting back in so make sure you measure those two so that they're even so other than that you have finished draining and filling good job all right, hey, thanks for checking out today's video. I hope it helped y'all out and you learned something new. I want to remind y'all to check out the Caswell's Cap Center and get all the information you need regarding the Cap platform. Uh, other than that, that's all I got for y'all today, and I will see y'all next time. Until then.